Today's plan is to combine some of the world's oldest technology, sundials, to tell time, with some of the world's newest technology, the computational knowledge engine, Wolfram Alpha. The purpose of this sundial is, first, to tell time based on the sun's location, and second, to indicate the occurrences of the summer solstice, the winter solstice, and the equinoxes. So let's get the basics right. What is the summer solstice? The summer solstice is when the sun is at its northernmost point. For those of us in the northern hemisphere, this is the longest day of the year. And now, what is the winter solstice? The winter solstice is the opposite. It's when the sun is at its southernmost point. In the northern hemisphere, this is the shortest day of the year. Finally, the equinoxes. An equinox is either of two times of the year when the sun crosses the plane of the Earth's equator and day and night are of equal length. This sundial is going to indicate all of those. The reason I like this project so much is because it illustrates how these are very real, very physical movements in the sun's position that we can measure tangibly. As you'll soon see, I rely heavily on Wolfram Alpha to make the math aspect feasible. Here's the plan. This triangle is called the gnomon. The gnomon will cast all the shadows that we want to measure. The rays extending from the back of the sundial are our lines. The horizontal line crossing them is the equinox line. The closer of the two curves is for the summer solstice, the further curve is for the winter solstice. Alright, so let's build it. I'm going to do cardboard. Uh, you could do this out of wood. Imagine you'd want to do that if you were to leave this outside. Um, but cardboard is simpler to use, so for the purposes of this video, I decided to just make it out of cardboard. If you do wood, the math's all the same. This large piece is going to be the sundial face. I'm using 12 by 12. You can really use whatever dimensions you want. Um, then I have this other piece from which we're going to cut the gnomon. Let's go ahead and do that now. So the point of the gnomon is for the top face of the triangle to point at celestial north. That means that if we're, let's say, 40 degrees above the equator, the celestial north will be 40 degrees above our horizon. In other words, 40 degrees above level. You can use Wolfram Alpha to find your latitude. Just type in your location, and then 2 degrees since we're going the to be in the degrees. Now we go to this piece of cardboard we're going to use for the gnomon. Uh, we're going to make it into a triangle, and one of those angles is going to be your latitude. I uh, suppose we had it at 40 degrees or something. I'm going to do mine. It's 42.43 degrees. And the lead protractor, try and make it good. And then mark off the angle, and then we'll cut it. First of all, we should mark the angle that was the latitude angle. doesn't matter how you mark it, but we'll need to know that later. So I'm going to make this about three inches high. We don't need the whole length. And we want to make sure that the cut I make is going to be at 90 degrees from the base of the gnomon. It's 90 degrees from this side that we're going to cut to this side. So no one's going to sit on this face plate at with the angle that we marked on the on the face, and it's going to be 90 degrees from this edge here. We point it that way. Uh, the left and right doesn't really matter too much. I'm going to go ahead and put it roughly in the center. Check that it's 90 degrees, and then mark the position it's going to sit on. But not glue it yet. I'll wait on that till later. Back to the math. We're going to draw the hour lines now. To do that, I'm going to show you how to do one of these lines, and then the rest will be pretty much self-explanatory. We're going to look for, we're going to calculate where the tip of the gnomon's shadow is going to be cast. From that, we can draw an hour line, and um, the rest will be fairly straightforward. 
The first thing we do is look up where the sun is for the time in question. I'm doing 10 o'clock right now. Let's type in sun 10 o'clock. By the way, whatever you do, please don't mix up standard time with daylight savings time. Daylight savings time is artificial and has nothing to do with where the sun actually is. Sundial calculations must use standard time all year. For precision, you may also want to check what location Wolfram Alpha is using for these results. It will usually guess your location quite well, but you can type in your location into the query for more accuracy. And then if you scroll down a bit, you get to these altitude and azimuth values. These are the ones that matter most. So altitude is maybe fairly self-explanatory. It's the number of degrees above the horizon that the sun is. Azimuth is the number of degrees clockwise from north that the sun is. It's clockwise from north. So now shadows obviously are cast under the direction opposite that the sun is. We're going to calculate where the known's shadow is supposed to land. We'll start by drawing these angles, which are equal to the altitude and azimuth values we got for the sun. Then we'll draw this triangle, which has the angles of 90 degrees minus the altitude, 90 degrees, and the remainder, which is equal to the altitude. The top edge is the path of the known tip's shadow, therefore the left vertex is where the shadow will land on the sundial. To plot this point on the sundial, we will mark out the azimuth angle from the known's base, and then mark off the distance corresponding to the bottom edge of the green triangle. The equation for that edge is gnomon height divided by tangent of the altitude angle. Alright, so now we've placed the gnomon's tip's shadow for this time of day. We've based that on the angle based on the azimuth, and we got the distance along that azimuth line, to place the, place the gnomon's tip's shadow at right there for 10 o'clock. Now since the top edge of the gnomon is a line, we can understand that it will be a line along of a shadow from the base of the gnomon to wherever the tip is. We can go ahead and draw that line right now. This is one of our hour lines. We can draw it out and also extend it all the way to the edge of the board. So this is an hour line. This is where the gnomon's top, the top of the gnomon's shadow, will be at 10 o'clock. Now, as you might know, with sundials, these hour lines work for any time of the year. All that changes is how far along these lines the gnomon's shadow is cast at different times of the year. All right, so that's 10 o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and draw all the other lines right now. That's the last hour line. I'm going to go ahead and highlight the hour lines, rather darken them to avoid confusing them with the gnomon based distance lines that we use for reference. This makes a fully functioning sundial. We just glued this gnomon on. These hour lines would indicate correctly all the hours of the day. But like I said at the beginning of the video, what I'd really like to do is also show that they indicate the equinoxes and summer and the winter solstice. So let's do that now. It's pretty simple, pretty, sim pretty much the same as what we just did for drawing these hour lines. We're going to use Wolfram Alpha to get alt altitude and azimuth values of the sun for all the different hours of the day on the summer solstice or the winter solstice or the equinoxes and then we'll mark out some lines onto the outer lines. So what we need to do is find out how far from the base from the base of the gnomon the tip of the gnomon's shadow is going to be at every time of day on the summer solstice. Using that distance 
and knowing these are lines already, we can, we can trace the path that the tip of the gnomon's shadow will follow during the day of the summer solstice. We'll use Wolfram Alpha to ask about the sun on the summer solstice for each time of day. Do remember to ask for one hour ahead if the results are in daylight savings time. We use the altitude value to calculate the distance from the known base. Alright, so now we're going to do the same thing for the winter solstice. For every hour we're going to find the distance from the base of the gnomon to the tip of the shadow and then mark that distance on the appropriate hour line and then we'll connect the lines to make a curve. Now the last thing remaining is to, is to draw a line to indicate the equinoxes. We can do it in much the same way as we did the solstices, getting hourly sun elevation values and plotting them onto the hour lines. There's a simpler way to get right to it. During the equinoxes, the sun is on the celestial equator. The sun's rays are cast toward the opposite point of the equator. But wherever along the celestial equator the sun is, its rays and shadows will be cast parallel to the equatorial plane. To find where the gnomon tip's shadow will land during either equinox, all we need to do is find where this plane crosses the plane of the sundial's face. The direction of the celestial equator is 90 degrees from either pole. Since the top edge of the gnomon is aligned with the poles, we can show the angle as follows. Now, by drawing a triangle, we find the distance we're looking for. As long as we made the gnomon correctly, the equinox line runs straight across the sundial face. Do make sure you put the angle that's marked on the edge of the sundial. Now to keep this upright and align it properly, I'm going to put a little 90 degree brace here.
We'll wait for the glue to dry, then it's done. Sundial should be aligned with true north as opposed to magnetic north. Wolfram Alpha can show you the difference. I use a compass to align it and then account for magnetic declination. The face should also be level. It's right about 11 o'clock now and it's showing up on the 11 o'clock line. Looking good. Also, we're just a few weeks away, less than two weeks away, from the winter solstice and as you can see, the shadow is getting very, very close to the winter solstice line. Well, that does it. Hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. A few closing comments. In hindsight, I would recommend using calipers instead of a ruler for more accurate distance measurements on the cardboard. I also want to note that solar time varies somewhat from clock time. Sundials are not perfectly accurate unless adjusted for this. By the same token, the calculations I've used for the summer and winter solstices are not perfectly accurate. I should use adjusted hour lines if I wanted perfect accuracy. Whether it's an equinox, a solstice, or somewhere in between, enjoy your day. Thanks for watching.